Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Apaca Direct, and I'm here on Technique Tuesday, and we're taking a look at this wonderful pattern. It's by Stephen West, and it's called Penguino. It's a little kid's baby jacket, and it's made with all scrap yarns. So you can take all of your sock weight yarns and double them together, or you can do what I did on mine and use my leftover Sueno DK that I have. And here's the back of mine. I'm showing you the back because you'll see on either side is what is called welts. And I wanted to talk about how to knit those and how easy they are to add to your knitting. So when the pattern in, that I did um, in Stephen West, they tell you to knit 10 rows and then join it together. I didn't want my welts to stick out quite as much. So I knit eight rows. So, you know, as usual, if you um, are working on something and you think that you can change it a little bit to make it work better for what you're looking for, um, go ahead and always do that. Maybe hold on a side so they can see the, the depth because you can. Yeah. Can you see uh, like, yeah, like that? Like yeah, that? That's better, yeah. Do you see that? Those are welts. Yeah, those are called welts. And those are just stock net stitch. And then you join your stitches together with like knit two together, much like you would do if you're doing a hat where you do a provisional cast on on the brim and you make a double knit. This is the same exact thing. We have people and coming so, on, the, on the front line from New York, yay. South Carolina. Hello, so Carolina. nice to see all of you. And I will show you what the inside of the welts look like. Do you see what the inside of the welts look like? That's what it looks like when they're put together. You can see it's nice and flat and it's it uh, doesn't cause any bulkiness to the inside of your project. Now, as we're going along, don't forget to let us know where you're from. Maybe if you have a beautiful pattern that you're working on, you can share it with us and you can tell us what the name of that pattern is. And it gives me ideas for Technique Tuesday and it helps all of us fellow knitters share with each other so we can um, maybe get new knitting ideas as we're going along. Someone said that Stephen West is a unique designer. He's a very unique designer. He's kind of, um, he is a different kind of a character, but he, I find him, um, he's kind of funny and um, just, you know, has a lot of character to him. Plus he's a very extremely talented knitter. And as for knitting, um, you know, stuff different and thinking outside of that box. Well, he's way outside of the box. He thinks he knits in all different directions. And you can see this little jacket that I'm doing. It's using bits. So you'll see this garter stitch edge here is knit in, um, and then it seemed to another garter stitch section is it, that's knit in the total different direction. And so I love these kind of patterns. You see how that one's turned that way. Um, because you get a ton of practice, whether it's picking up stitches or seaming or doing the welts or what have you, all these um, different colors require you to weave in ends. And a little trick for some people have knit this project and they're like, oh my word, there are so many ends to weave in. It's just totally overwhelming for them. And what I try to do at nighttime before I go to bed when I'm too tired to knit anymore, I will go ahead and weave in my ends at the end of the day. That way when I get up the next morning and I'm working on a whole new section, I have my project nice and neat and the ends are woven in as I go along and it makes it easier for me to work on. So it's totally fantastic. Now every week we have a prize, right? For this last week it was the little yarn cozy in the bunny colorway. And these are by Buffy um, and Designs. And what they're meant for is you take your little cake of yarn that would look like that and you shove it inside this yarn cozy and it keeps your um, yarn from falling apart or unraveling or becoming unruly. So these um, yarn cozies are totally fantastic. And I was thinking for this week's prize, I would offer, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Chibis, and we have one that's a bent tip and then one that's regular 
um, tipped uh, darning needles for your convenience. And I love these um, little containers because you can see through them. You can put all your darning, it fits a whole bunch of darning needles in it and you will um, be able to see what you have in that little tiny container. And it's a screw on lid, not a pop on lid because sometimes if it was a pop on lid, the lid might pop off in into your bag and then your darning needles would be set free and falling all over the bottom of the bag. So having that screw on lid is fantastic. So I was thinking the prize, you guys can help me choose whether someone might like the vent tip darning needles or the regular darning needles, which is whichever one you think that um, What's the difference? people would what, like. Why would they get one versus the other? Um, some people really like this vent tip. You see the vent tip needles in there? Some people really like that vent tip for weaving in their ends. and. Um, some people just like the regular darning noodles and it's a personal choice. So um, you guys um, help me decide which ones to send out in the mail. And the way you do that is you post comments in the comment section and then you're entered to win the prize too. So it's totally fantastic. So go ahead and put in your vote in there so we can all have input on what is our favorite. Maybe if you have any ideas as to why for us newer knitters, maybe um, people who are new and don't have darning needles yet and wanna purchase some, um, your thoughts are always appreciated for those knitters because then they can um, maybe think about things they might not have thought of otherwise and it helps them make a buying decision. So it's totally fantastic. So what I was gonna talk about today is these lovely little welts. And so these welts, you can add to all kinds of things. So I have over here, I have this nice little sample. I wanted to show you how, um, how I thought it would be nice to use a welt. So I have this nice little, um, I have a baby booty pattern and you can see right here, I've knit the bottom of it. And right here in the front, do you see that? That is a welt that I'm doing and it's totally easy to do. So on my, I know it looks kind of all tangled up right here and it is a little bit wild, but it's all good. Um, I'm going to try on the, on the booty, what it does is it defines the edge of the booty and it's going to make it like a kind of rolled over edge that is going to really define the edge of that booty and make it really look special. And I um, started this when I picked up my new color, I knit four complete rounds in just stockinette stitch. And then what you do to complete the welt, if you look right here, I've already started my welt and I have on this back needle right here are the stitches. These were the stitches that I had knit from. And then on the back here, I'm looking to see, you can, I'm gonna move this back needle into position. What I like to do is I take a spare needle that's a small, the smaller the needle, the better is in my opinion. And you just pick up all the right hand leg of the stitches four rows below because I knit four rows in stockinette stitch before I'm doing the, um, the welt. So, and you can see, right here see that pearl bump these are each stitches that i'm going to be picking up for my welt so <clears throat> when you're picking up stitches for your welts you could do a couple of things if stephen west in his directions he tells you to pick up these pearl bumps right but if and you're supposed to pick up one stitch so that you have, like if I have 10 stitches at the top, I wanna have 10 stitches at the bottom to complete my welt. But if you pick up the pearl bumps, let's count these together. Here's the stitches on top. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches on top. But if you pick up the pearl bumps, there's gonna be no pearl bump over here for you to pick up. You have to pick up this one right here. And let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's one stitch short, which is a lot of times, you know, in Michelle Hunter's videos and all, all the videos when they're talking about um, picking up stitches for um, 
different cast ons and stuff, they have that, they run into one stitch short. And that is why, because they're picking up the pearl bumps. But what I like to do is I like to pick up the right hand legs. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I pick up the right hand legs, I have the correct amount of stitches to be able to go ahead and do that welt where if I pick up the pearl bumps, I'm one short. So at the end, I would have to just kind of fake it and make one. Um, and then um, it would probably work out just fine. You probably wouldn't be able to see it, but I'm just saying if you pick up the right hand legs, you'll get the correct stitch count. So let's take a look and see how, and what I like to do is I use that smaller needle and I go ahead and pick up my stitches way ahead of time. So I'm basically doing knit two together when I'm done. So I'm gonna pick up the stitches all the way to the, the red um, end here to this um, join. So and I'm picking up the right hand legs. So you can see that I'm just going along and scooping up that right hand leg. And this makes it very nice for you to be able to, there you go. There I am. I have all the stitches picked up that I need until I get to this end over here. So I'm just gonna pull this all the way through and then I can start knitting right off of it. And you can see my yarns are kind of in chaos right here, but I will move them out of the way, making sure that you're not knitting with your tail. <laughs> you know how that can be a problem. <laughs> so you're looking for your working yarn and we're going to pretend as if we're knitting two together, which we are. We're gonna be knitting a stitch from the front needle going into that as if to knit and knitting a stitch from the back needle, making sure not to grab some extra yarn on there. And then you just do it like you didn't knit two together. And this is what creates your welt. And you can use welts. You know, welts would be great to use on the bottom of a market bag, for instance, around the edges to keep your bag standing more upright, give structure to something. Um, it can, you can use it for decoration. You can use it to define an area. Um, you can use it to separate different patterns from each other. Um, you can use it before you, when you introduce a new color to your project. There's all kinds of things that you can use welds for. That's totally fantastic. So we're just knitting along here. And then I have half of my welt created. I will, since I'm doing the magic loop method, you could see my cord is kind of getting in my way, but it's all good. So I'm one stitch short on the back needle. So what I will just do on this one here is I would take this and put that on the back and then I would turn my work. But you see how the welt is forming here? Isn't that cool? It's gonna add real definition to the edge of that booty. Not only is it a color change, but it just adds definition. So then I would just flip my work around here and I would take my little tiny needle again and go to, right, you got to look and see where that stitch is. I want to go right in here. You see that pearl bump right there? and then go all along. I'm just grabbing the right hand legs of those pearl bumps. And, and that way you'll have the correct amount of stitches. So, and I would do this all the way to the end. Then I would scoot this into um, place. Let's just do it with that amount of stitches so you can see what I'm doing. So I would slide it all the way. Once I got all the stitches all the way along here, I would slide my working needle, that back needle into position, and again, go do the knit two together. And making welts is easy. Um, when on Stephen West pattern, it, it called for eight rows of knitting. For me, I, I, it was a little tiny bit more bulky than I wanted to see. So I um, went ahead and made it eight rows instead of 10 rows. And, but doing the Stephen West pattern, you get to learn to weave in ends 
that are all different directions and then um, work on seaming that is seaming all different kinds of edges together. And then we have the um, stitches waiting on scrap yarn. I'll show you in one second how many stitch uh, areas of stitches that I have waiting on scrap yarn, waiting for me to do different sections in the pattern. And with his patterns, you just have to, he'll say cast on six stitches and you'll be working on something that has 20 stitches. And he's not talking about that 20 stitches at all. And I, I was trying to read into it and it's like, no, just cast on the six stitches and forget about the 20 stitches that you have on your needle. And then it worked great. But you see how this welt is forming and it looks really nice on the inside of your work and you will have the correct stitch count when you're done. So that is how easy it is to take this little welt technique that Stephen West shows us and put it into um, practice and actually put it into your knitting. So let's take a look here at all these different things. I was thinking that we could, somewhere here, I have a darning needle. I know I put it. There it is. There. Aha, got it. Make sure the cat doesn't get to that. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to show you these little, because he has you hold so many different stitches on scrap yarn. And my scrap yarn, you'll see it's a little bit finer than the actual yarn that I'm knitting with. I tied knots in the end because I did have a couple of times where um, if you accidentally sit on this and move your project, this, it'll come straight out. And then you're like, oh, my word, I just pulled those stitches out <laughs> and they're loose. <laughs> it's not a good place to be. So also on these, when I'm doing my work and I'm trying to um, seam them together, I'm trying to make my seams as flat as I can because there are so many. You don't want to add a bunch of bulk to your project. So you can see in here I, how I've done this and it is the, there's no bulk or anything like that. So now let's look and see where I have. I'm looking for my red one. Um, maybe I'll start with this blue one. Oh, there's no yarn on it. So if you look right here, I wanted to show you this one. Okay. So what are you showing in here? I just wanted to show them a different way to weave in your ends. Okay. Like this one right here. What I try to do is when I'm weaving in my ends, I don't want a bunch of blue strands going over the top of this red. I want it to keep it as neat as I possibly can. So you, I, I like to, in this instance right here, sometimes when you're seaming things together, you're doing it from the right side, the side that the good side of your work. But when you're weaving in the ends for um, the back like this, you want to do it so that you have the wrong side of your work facing you. And then these are going to be live stitches. They're going to be knit um, later on. I'm sure we're going to be uh, using those stitches when we start constructing the underarm, the, the sleeve of our sweater. So what I would do with this one, you see how this strand, this strand right here is coming out underneath that. What I like to do instead of messing with that and getting in the way of that, I want to get away from that. So what I'm going to do is see how there's a blue strand right in there already. I'm just going to take my yarn and put it underneath that strand. Do you see how it makes it continues the nice red seam and keeps that there? And then what I like to do is also get away from this edge and and this edge because we're going to be picking up stitches. So I want to get away from that as soon as I possibly can. So all I'm going to do is do duplicate stitch, which what it means is that our stitches look like this, right? And there's a pearl bump here. I'm going to go underneath, around, and back through. And then actually I'll be going like this and then I'll be going back up and around and through. That's the way I'm going to be threading my um, tail of my yarn that I'm weaving in to kind of just duplicate the stitches that are already there. And if you can't see what I'm um, looking at, I can kind of open it up for you. So this is the strand right here that I'm going to be go using to go behind and 
On this first one right here, it's kind of off a little bit because there's decreases right on these edges. So I'm just gonna go straight up here and try and get away from this left-hand edge and go over to the right. Okay, now, now I can go right under here. And let me see if I can turn it the other way so you can see it a little better and I'll open it up. But I'm, I'm just duplicating the actual stitches that are already there. So here is my yarn and I'm going into this pearl bump. And then if you open it up, do you see this strand of yarn right here? I'm going to go right behind it. And then go back into my pearl bump and then go to the next one over and then go under. And when you're weaving in your ends, always make sure that you are not getting too tight or you're not too sloppy. Uh, you want it too loose, but you don't want it too tight either. You want it to be about the same tension as your actual knitting that you were knitting with. And I like to use this method for weaving in ends. Um, I find that it's less visible and works pretty good for getting those ends woven in. And then what you can do is just kind of pull it and stretch it out. And then if you wanted to just to make sure that you don't have it, um, you're, you know how it, they tell you to do like an M and W in painting or anything like that. Well, you could go back in the other direction and, um, or go um, in anyhow, grab some pearl bumps maybe and just go just a little bit back in the other direction. And then what I would do is when I cut it, I leave myself a little bit of extra length. And then after it's blocked, then I trim my ends. But you see on this other side, if you look at it, it looks pretty nice on both sides of your work and it's not too thick. And then that end is all woven in and ready to go. Now, let's see if we have another one over here. This one, do you see how these two ends, this is knitting that's going this way and this is knitting that's going this way. And so the two ends don't, they're not actually, oh, they're not seamless. They don't look great, but sometimes you can take the tail and just by, Let's oops, move it up a little bit, huh? sorry, honey. You can take your um, tail of your yarn. What I don't wanna do is put too much red over here in the brown, but I would like to bring my work and and no, I don't like that one. I want to bring I want to bring this brown and just elevate it just a little bit. And you might need to try more than once to see if you can get it up up a little bit. Try this one strand. That's pretty good. Let's see if I can go under here. And I think probably the best thing to do is just turn it. And then you can do that. Remember the duplicate stitch again? And and just go along and do it that way. And after you've done it a little bit before you cut your strands, you will want to make sure the gauge, the tension is not too tight. And then you can do it a couple more times so you can call that good. Um, I sometimes like to go back just a little in the other direction. There. 
and then I would call that good. And you see from the other side, looks really good. And that, so then those ends are woven in, but I haven't um, added too much bulk to my edges. And I elevated the brown one up just a little bit by pulling it up with that one strand of yarn. And it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to be doing with the project, oh, also I forgot to tell you one thing that I did do on here is that I added buttonholes. And my buttonholes, I added buttonholes because on this jacket it's just open in the front. And sometimes I, I felt like, you see in the picture the little guy's kind of folding it closed. Um, with his hands, but there's no way for him to close his little jacket. And I thought, well, that won't do. So what I did is I put buttonholes on these edges, four buttons on either side. And I figured, you know, as they get bigger or smaller, because it's meant to be so much wider, you can either pull it in this way or you can let it out depending on if you need a little more room or not on the actual project. So I did put buttonholes. So, um, we will take a look at that next week when I finish it and added that to my project. And I will have Meg put my exact pattern that I use just in case you make the jacket out of your scrap yarns and want to add buttonholes, you'll have the pattern that I used. <laughs> so anyway, um, this pattern is so, it's great. It's totally awesome. I, I had a big smile on my face, right, Jim? Because mm -hmm. I love patterns that are a little bit challenging. And um, Stephen West does make you think. I mean, I love patterns like that. So doing this little jacket out of scrap yarns is a great way to use up scrap yarns. And it's a great way to learn something new and or practice the skills that you have been using for a long time. Maybe you haven't um, seen it in a while and you need a little practice with that. Well, this is a great way to get a lot of pack a practice in a small package. And um, also it doesn't cost anything for the yarn because you're using up your scraps. So that's totally fantastic. So let's take a look and see on my little ah here it is who is the prize winner for last week it's Janice Lovering Janice Lovering congratulations you won the yarn cozy with little bunnies so all you have to do is get in contact with us at Alpaca Direct and we can get this in the mail to you. So congratulations, Janice. That's totally fantastic. And then don't forget, all of the rest of you need to vote on the darning needles, whether we want regular darning needles or bent tip darning needles. And this will be the prize for next week. So that's fantastic. So I, yes, honey? Oh, there was a, just going to say there's several people that were commenting that they're, they they had COVID and they were in the hospital and they're actually home now. So they, they serve, you have a lot of oh, COVID survivors. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And um, we, we haven't had anyone in our um, family that had, um, or actually our daughter had COVID, but she didn't get seriously ill with it. And you and I have had our sure. first vaccination and we are, I'm going to be getting my second one uh, tomorrow. So, and I didn't, um, I was too uh, afraid of the Moderna one, but I got the Pfizer one. <laughs> and so we'll see how that goes tomorrow. I'm hoping that I'll feel just fine. The first vaccination was fine. It went great. So for all of you out there that have survived COVID, oh, I'm so happy for you. And I'm so sorry that you, we're um, ill from, it's a terrible thing. COVID's been horrible for a lot of people. So um, my best wishes go out to all of you out there who have had to struggle with that. And this next week, I'm going to be finishing up my jacket. And what was, oh, I had, um, uh, for this next week, I was thinking that I'm going to be talking about different ways to pick up stitches and then bind off options for this little jacket. And the little jacket has I-cord bind off. So I'm going to be talking about all different kinds of, of bind offs that give you um, kind of a either a substantial edge or like a, a decorative edge for your knitting. So I'll be talking about that next week. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you soon.